Hebrews chapter 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. One version read, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us, and let us run and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for your love. And as we enter into your words this morning, we pray that you'll bless us. We pray that you'll give us an ear to hear your words and that we'll be receptive of your words. I pray that you'll touch my lips. Lord, let it be not my words, but let it be your words. And let it be inspired, Lord, because it's already inspired. But Lord, I pray for inspiration this morning and transformation. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church say, Amen. You may be seated and let's give these guys a hand. Choose for a topic this morning. Don't carry it with you. Don't carry it with you. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, don't carry it with you? The scripture that we read this morning is taken from Hebrews 12. The author of Hebrews, some writer think the authors or some scholars think that the authors are unknown. And some attribute this writing to Paul, Apollos, Barnabas, and even Priscilla as potential authors. Hebrews was written, or the book of Hebrew was written between A.D. 60 and A.D. 70. A little bit of history there, right? Got to provide you context about what we're preaching. A critical period in the early Christianity as followers of Christ face widespread persecution and, impending and the impending destruction of Jerusalem. The primary audience here is the Jewish Christian grappling with their question about their new faith. So people are coming to Christ or coming or following Jesus from their other religion and now they are grappling with their faith in the context of their Jewish heritage. Hebrews 11, so understand that the way the Bible was written, it's not, it wasn't written like in chapters. It was like one straight book. So Hebrews is like one straight book, but further on they decided that they were divided into chapters. So if you're reading Hebrews, it's a story that you're listening to. So Hebrews 11 recounts the story of the Old Testament. Heroes of faith like Abraham, Moses, didn't read by faith. Abraham, by faith Moses, by faith Noah, by faith. Do you, you like to read that part? It's kind of like just going down historical and hear what these people did by faith. How they overcame by faith. Whose life and these lives exemplified faith in action. Hebrews 11 serve as a foundation of chapter 12. Creating a strong narrative bridge between the lived experience of those spiritual ancestors and faith journey and their faith journey and for those of us who are reading the story today so it's not just for them it's not just a story that we're listening to we're actually invited into a story of these old prophets and also to make the story a part of our lives amen understanding this historical literary context enhance the power of Hebrews 12 and verse 1. This verse is a rallying call for early for the early Christians and indeed for us today to preserve to persevere in faith embodied by the testimonies of those who have gone before us and to throw off anything that hinders our spiritual progress. Amen. 
So these were men who have, who have endured. These were men who have fought. These were men who have believed and they have overcame. Amen? Therefore, and it starts off, therefore, since we are so, since we were surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. You know, therefore is therefore for, is there for some reason, right? So it's not, it's a continuation. So the, the chapter didn't start off like with therefore. So it's, it's, it's leading from chapter, 12, from chapter 11 right into chapter 12. Therefore signifies that the example of faith that is being described in chapter 11, the writer summarized connecting the past journey with uh, the journey that they were embarked on and to, for us to embrace this journey now. Amen? And he says that since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, and the imagery here is, can you picture a stadium filled with people cheering you on? But not only that these people are cheering you on, these heroes of faith are actually there with us, running the race with us. Telling us to go on, amen? Telling us to persevere, amen? And so, with us today, with us in this race, these past heroes of faith, we have Abraham, we have Ruth, we have Rahab, we have so many of these who are witnessing or witnesses to our faith race. They are not spectators, but they're actually participants, encouraging us and inspiring us to run the race and to run this race. Amen? Amen? And what are they saying? What is the writer saying? The writer is saying, throw off everything that hinders us. Everything that hinders, everything that will stop us, everything that will prevent us from moving on. So this morning I decided that I will take a ride to somewhere. So I bought on here a little a little suitcase. You know, most time we, or all the time when we, we go to the airport, they ask us, did you pack your bag? Am I right? And they ask you, what's inside of the bag? Is there anything that is dangerous? So, so they have a, a prohibited list that things that you should not take with you on the plane. Am I right? And what happened if one of those items are in your bag? They're either going to stop you from boarding or they're going to take it away. Am I right? Talk back to me. Yeah. Right? They're going to stop you from boarding or they're going to take it away. But I want for you to also notice that they also check you out. <laughs> so you walk through this thing that scan your body. And if it go beep, beep, they pull you over. Or they tell you to go back and take your belt off. Why? Because you cannot go on board with anything that is not permitted to go on board. Amen? So I want, for you to, I want to bring this in context to what I'm preaching here today. So the writer of Hebrews is saying that let us get rid of anything that is going to present you or prevent you from getting on board. Anything that is going to stop you from getting on this journey. Are you with me so far? And, and, and so the language used here is reminiscence of preparing for a journey to shed off the unnecessary things. 
that will prevent you from flying, that will prevent you from, from progressing in your Christian faith. Are you with me so far? So, you know, yesterday I was, I was thinking, how, how do I bring this home? And I thought that when we first came to Christ, we were like the shiny suitcase. We were innocent. We wanted to know things. We wanted to know what to shed off. We wanted to know what to do. We wanted to know how to fast. We, know, we wanted to know how to become a better Christian. And somebody said, you need to change your attitude. We'll change your attitude. We fast and we pray. And so was these Jewish people when they came to Christ. They wanted to know what do they need to do next? What do they need to do? Because we're convicted. We're, 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 we have the past and we have the future and we're, and we're being told all these things. And so let me remind you today, church, that in order to run this race, there are things that we need to put off. And it does not have to do with the external. It has to do with the internal. All right? Are you with me so far? Because we're good, and I preached a few weeks ago, we're good in making our external look pretty. Like this morning, I made sure I was dressed appropriately because I was going to stand before you. This morning, you made sure when you came to church, you were dressed appropriately. You went before the mirror and you look at yourself and you style your hair and you put on some lipstick and you put on some things on your finger and you walk out and you said to your husband or your wife and you say, how am I looking? And she say, honey, you're looking good. And you said, well, I'm ready to go. Am I right? But what we don't see is the internal. We don't see what is inside. And what the writer of Hebrews is saying is that you need to put off those things that are eating you up in the internal so that you can run this race with perseverance. So what is the writer asking us to do? The writer is asking us to do to open up ourselves. Now listen, the priests cannot do it for you. Are you with me? So a lot of people come to church and they want a pastor to forgive you. Can I tell you something? He needs to put off too. He needs to be entangled. He needs to, to, uh, to get on the internal. So the router is calling us to an internal thing. Okay? Are you with me? And the only person that can affect the internal is Jesus. Are you with me? The only person that can affect the internal is yourself and Jesus. So it's the, the writer is asking you to get on the internal and open up yourself to the Holy Spirit and ask him to change you. And what is he asking you to do? To get on the internal. And so I'm going to open Nothing scary. The last time I had a scary mass, and a little boy was sitting over there, and he loves me dearly, and he wouldn't come back in church. He was like, Pastor Oral had the devil on the stage with him. So I, I won't do that anymore. So the Holy Spirit is asking us to get on the internal. And listen. The only person that can get on the internal is you. So what is on the internal? Drunkenness. The only person that can get rid of that is you. 
anger, bitterness. How do you take away bitterness from your external? You have to get on the what? Internal. Cheating. Laziness. Slander. Lying. Malice. You can change your socks from the external. You can change that from the internal. All right. So when God, when God asks us to do something, many of us ask, want to come and present ourselves. Oh, how do I look today? Do I look spiritual? The tradition where I'm coming from, people go to church with their hats, with their broad hats and, and their suit dressed up together. But when they leave church, you don't want to mess with them. They take their hat off and you see the real you. What I'm saying is that the real you is on the inside. The real you is what we got to deal with. The real you is what the gospel is saying. That you need to take off the real you and let God deal with the real you. What's on the internal? You got some blackness to deal with? The only person can change that is who? You and the Holy Spirit. You got some match on the, in the, in the, on the internal. Some things you, you just flare and you just get off the track. Get off the rail. You want to lose some weight? It starts with the Internal. So remember today, church, that if you want to run this race with perseverance, that is marked out for us, let us put aside every weight. Can I bring your attention to something? Is the writer saying then, is it possible for you as a Christian to be walking around like this? And the answer is, yes. It's possible that as a Christian that you, we have anger issue. It, it's possible as Christians that we have bitterness. It's possible as a Christian that we have some blackness. It's possible as Christian that we have some things that are wrong with us on the internal. And what the, what the writer is saying that you, in order to continue in this race, you need to get rid of those things. If you want to run this race, if you want to be victorious, amen church, it requires patience, resilience, and a long-term commitment. Understand that this race is, not mar is marked out for us, indicating that God has a unique part for the believer. It is not a competitive race, but a are you hearing me church? I remember the days... We go to church and we want to be like someone else. You remember those days? Are you with me? We want to, we want to be like the pastor. We want to be like the singer on stage. But you know that they've got issue too that they got to deal with. So our example here, my friend, is Jesus Christ. Our example at all time, the goal that we must reach is Jesus, not the pastor, not the evangelist, not the singer. The goal of Christianity is Jesus because he is the one that will perfect us. Here's another thing. 
the word perseverance means it seems as if it's going to be a long race, right? It seems as if it's going to be, we're going to be running for a long time. I am getting old. I don't look it. Yes. Thank you for that. I've been around church a long time ago. And I've seen some folks who come to church. And they just want to run this race. They, they, they think it's a sprint. But you, how many of you know you just don't get a, you just, I know the Lord work miracles. And he's a miracle working, worker. But anger? You think you just get rid of it one day? Yeah, he, the Holy Spirit can do it. But the reason why this race, it's a race, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Because guess what, my friends? If it was a sprint, some of us would get there before the other because some of us are slower than, it, than the other. But it's a marathon. It's a long race. It's a long journey. And things are going to happen in this journey. That's why the Bible says, with perseverance continue and, 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 and there's going to be hardship and there's going to be trials and there's going to be tribulation you're going to get upset you're going to get weary but the Bible says run this race with perseverance that is set before you amen church it is possible that we can carry these things with us but understand who is the perfecter of our faith? Jesus is. Consider your life. What are the weights and sin that are holding you back? For each one of us today, it is different. Perhaps it's a habit, it's a relationship, it's a judge, it's a pursuit. It is something that is taking you away from the purpose that God has for you. In Luke chapter 21 and verse 34, it says, But watch ye therefore, lest your heart be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life, that that day may come upon you suddenly. Galatians 7, 5 and verse 7 says, But you are running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? Timothy chapter 2 and verse 4 says, No soldier, no soldier get entangled in civilian pursuit since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 31 and 32, Get rid of all bitterness, rage and wrath, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other. Just as Christ forgave you. What is the application today? Because you see, many times we can come to church and we, we hear the word, but we walk out of here with no form of application. It's just a good sermon. It's, it's spoken well and all that stuff, my friend. But what is the application today? The application here is for us to commit to shedding these hindrances. The, the commitment is to commit to shedding these hindrances. It might require prayer and fasting and accountability. But remember, you are not running this race alone. You are part of a community cheered by 
on by a great cloud of witnesses. Amen, church. You've got Moses. You've got Abraham. You've got Enoch. You've got Paul. You've got Peter. You've got all these prophets cheering you on. You can make it. You can run this race with patience. And if you get down, remember the Lord is with you. And if you fail, get up and run again. And if you stumble, keep on running. And if you fall, get up and run because the Lord is with you. And he says, no weapon that form against you shall ever prosper. He didn't say that weapons won't form. They will form, but they will not prosper. Continue running your race because the Lord is with you. What's the application? Next, determine to run your race with perseverance. It's going to get difficult. But I'm going to run. <laughs> it's going to get hard. But I'm going to run. The Christian journey, as I said before, is not a sprint. It's a marathon. But I'm going to run. There will be obstacles, fatigue at times, but I'm going to run. Oh, hallelujah. I will not quit. The application is, I will not quit. I will fast. I will pray. I will seek counseling. I will seek friends who will help me out. I will not quit. <laughs> But I'm not going to carry it with me. Somebody say amen. I'm not going to carry any extra burden. I'm not going to carry it. I'm not going to carry extra load. I'm going to leave myself so that I can run this race with patience. Somebody bless the Lord. Relating this to our journey. You might be walking around with these things. However, the qualification for heaven is to lay them off. Put them aside. If you can't go on a plane with explosive, you can't get to heaven with these. Are you with me, church? That's not my word. That's God's words. Amen. Understand the scripture. It is a possibility that we can carry these things but in order to have victory you must lay aside you cannot carry them let us commit ourselves to moving forward and the only way to move forward because you understand is that some things stop us literally so physically you might be moving but spiritually you're stagnant. Amen, church? This whole journey of Christianity is progressing towards the goal of perfection through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen, church? It's not by ourself. It's not by our strength. It's not by my mind. It's not by my power. But it's by His Spirit today. And we've got the power in Jesus' name to be overcomers in the name of the Lord. Somebody praise God.